Welcome to our Spelling Netcast. Looks like we're doing sort 13 today. 13. All right, but first, do not forget, you need your glue stick. You need your pencil, preferably sharpened so that you can write. And your pair of scissors, nice and neat, ready to cut things out. Your spelling um, bag, um, so you can put stuff in it like your spelling words, your chips, and your spelling notebook, and of course, your spelling words. Let's get started cutting our words out. Looks like we've got three exemplars today, and it looks like we're going to do verb suffixes. And what this means is that when we add this, these suffixes, most of the time, they're going to turn them into verbs. And what is a verb? Anybody? Anybody know what a verb is? What does a verb do? Oh, my goodness. You need to find out what a verb does. Okay? Because a verb, you need a noun and a verb. So, um, Bob ran to the store. That is... Running to the store. Run is the verb. So it's an action, isn't it? So actions. Verbs are actions. All right. Beautiful. So let's put this in here. And remember, I like to cut these out so that uh, they're still connected. That way it makes it a lot easier for us to um, write down them equally on the page. And so as I do these, I also like to cut these out. Now, when I cut these out, the thing I want you to do is make sure that you're cutting them out with me. Please make sure you're cutting them out with me. Because if you're not, then it's not going to work too well, is it? Is it? No, I do not think it will. So what I want you to make sure is that you cut these out with me. Because then you can sort them with me. Put them out so you can see them. I want you to see the patterns. I want you to see what's going on with them. See which ones belong in which. And I want you to just cut them out and put them around the outside. Okay, so spread them out. Spread these guys all the way out. So I'm taking my words. Oh, looks like they're symbolized. There's a little dampen. And just spread them out. You don't have to put them all over the all over the table. You can just keep them right on the table or wherever you're doing your words and just throw them out here just so that you can see them. Okay? I want you to be able to see all the words. That way when I pick up a word, you pick up a word. Got it? All right. So let's see what I got. I'm almost done here. Just putting the rest of these out. All right. Good. I've got a couple here that we're going to need. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. Put a little glue on this tag here. And I don't like to write it. I actually just like to glue this one that's here. That way when I... Whoops, there's my glue. That way when I've got this on here, it it's already got everything written here. That way I don't have to write anything else. So now that I've got this, let's take this. I like to go a couple lines down. That gives me a space to write down what these words actually mean. And so we're going to do dash E-N. And remember, a suffix comes at the end of the word. Okay? Dash means that's the root word. The E-N means it comes at the end of the word. Put an underline there. Dash I-Z-E. Put an end. Dash I F Y. Put an underline on that. Excellent. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these out now because you're going to need these tomorrow. So you need to cut them out. So cut them and then put them in your zip top bag. That way you've got them for tomorrow night. You've got all the words ready for tomorrow night. Got it? All right. So let's get into this. Let's talk about. Um, what these words all mean. Okay? 
So what do you think all of these words are going to mean? Any ideas? Ideas. Anybody? Anybody? Anybody talking about I'm not hearing you. But then again, I'm on a video, so I'm not going to hear you anyways. So dash E-N dash I-Z-E is actually going to take a root word, and it's going to change it to a verb. It's going to change it to a verb, and I mentioned that to you before. So what it's actually going to say is to be or to cause to be. Okay, to be or to cause to be. So let's look at our first word, E-N. We have frighten. So we're going to do fright, which that is our root word. We add the E-N to it. So if it caused a fright, that would be a noun because it's an idea. And we add the E-N to it, and it changes it to a verb. I will frighten the children or something, you know. Oh. So that is an action word. Frighten is an action word, right? I hope you see that. I hope you see that it is. Right? Right? Okay. So now... What we need to do is look at the next word. Let's do a couple more on these. Um, let's do another E-N word. Oh, mistaken. Miss. Oh, we got to underline the E-N, don't we? Take. Mistake is the. I made a mistake. That is an idea, so that's a noun. I add the E-N. I already have an E, so I just add the N to it. Mistaken. I am mistaken. That means it's an action that I did, which is mistaken. So that changes that to a verb. All right? So let's get into I-Z-E. Because I-Z-E will do a little bit more. Um, let's do capitalize. Capital. Capital is the root word. I-Z-E, we underline that, and I-Z-E changes that to a verb. But what we need to do is we need to find out what does capital mean, and how am I going to capitalize on something. So if we look up capital, then what that is, is that is... Um, a city or town, um, a capital letter, uh, something big. How does that make that work? So if we look up capitalize, capital is big, I guess. That's what it's to, um, to be turned to one's advantage. I capitalize on that to turn to some uh, um, advantage. Hmm. You know what? You figure that out. How does capital work with eyes to make capitalize? And you talk to me about Because if I give you everything, that's not going to be too good, is it? Let's look at our next word. Let's look at visual eyes. Visual eyes. I-Z-E. Visual is looking, right? So if I can visualize something, that means it's an action that I'm doing visually. So I'm seeing something in my mind. I'm actually doing. I'm visualizing it. I'm seeing it. I'm, I'm trying to see it. And so that makes that a verb. Okay? So let's get into our next word, which, or our next verb suffix, which is I-F-Y. Class if I. So if I look at class, and when I'm talking about class, if you think of our class, it's putting into um, a group. So class is grouping. So if I'm classy, if I'm if I got class, I'm grouping. If I'm 
classifying something, that means I'm putting it into a group. So there's my verb again. I'm putting it into a group. Isn't that interesting? So let's look at another IFY word. So let's do purify. Pure is the root word, but I need to take off the E because I'm dropping the E, putting the I-F-Y. Pure is something clean, right? So if I need to purify something, it needs to be clean or causing to be clean. I'm causing something to be clean, so I'm purifying it. Isn't that cool? That is so cool. I really want you to find out what this capitalize means. I want you to figure out what that is because that one's going to be an interesting one. So there's always something that I give you a, a thing on, uh, uh, something to do, isn't it? Isn't that crazy? But this is one I really want to go over is forbidden. Forbidden. Because forbidden is the only one that really is not that much of a verb. Because if something is forbidden... That's not an action. That's actually turning it to a adjective. So forbidden. So if I forbid something to do that, to do something, I am that's the thing I'm trying to get them not to do. Forbidden means that they're not supposed to do it. I'm causing them not to do it. You are forbidden. All right. But there's one word in here that you'll notice does not have an I-Z-E. It has a Y-Z-E. So that is our oddball. Our oddball is analyze. Interesting. Anna, this one is an interesting root word. And so when I looked it up, because I had no idea about this, when I looked up Anna, it wasn't my sister-in-law or my niece, because I have a niece named Anna. What it actually means is a collection of information. So when I take Anna lies and I put lies, L-I-Y-Z-E, at the end, that means I'm taking and I'm looking at a whole bunch of or a collection of information. I'm causing to look at a collection of information. Isn't that interesting? To be looked at. Wow. Huh. That is kind of interesting. I, I never knew ANA meant a collection of information. But that's kind of interesting. But another thing about this YZE... There's only, I think, one other word that has a Y-Z-E, and that's paralyze. And I don't think paralyze is in our words. I wonder if we should put that in there up there, though. Paralyze. 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 Hmm. That's the only other one that you're going to find that is a Y-Z-E. Now, Britain or England uses Y-Z-E a lot instead of I-Z-E. So, just thought I'd let you know that. So, interesting. Interesting stuff today on some of these. I want you to find out what some of these words mean, all right? So now your job is to take all the rest of these words, write them in, underline the suffix, and try to figure out how that changes that word when we add that suffix at the end. You got it? It's fabulous to learn about these words. We're becoming entomologists, which means the study of words. I hopefully that you under you you are you're enjoying these lessons and learning something from them. Not just writing them down, but learn. Learn. It's good. It's good to learn. It's fun. All right. You guys get this done, and we'll talk to you later, all right? Okay.